Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I am here with Kevin Sherman. Kevin is running for Pittsfield City Council Ward 3. Kevin, thank you for taking the time to do this tonight. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks a lot for having me again. Good to see you. Yes, likewise. Um, so I guess, Kevin, for those who don't know you, if you could just give a brief intro of who you are and why you're running for the city council this year. Yeah, sure. So Kevin Sherman, born and raised in Pittsfield. Uh, I was a city councilor from 2000 eight to 2000 and I've always have to do the math Mike 2014 2008 to 2014 three terms as counselor at large the last term I was council president I've worked at uh, Berkshire Life Guardian since 2004 I live in Kathy on Kathy Way in Ward 3 with my wife Tammy my daughters Molly and Caroline and uh, I'm, I'm running for Ward 3 because frankly there was a vacant seat left by Councilor Kakamo and in talking over with my family uh, we thought it was a good opportunity uh, to, uh, to run for office, uh, given the uh, experience that I have, the leadership style that I have, uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, the skill set that I can bring to the council, uh, and my love for the community. I, I, just, I love Pittsfield. There's nowhere I'd rather be. I've said that my entire life. Uh, so we saw this as an opportunity to uh, throw our hat back in the ring. My children are older, and they said they, you know, they really didn't have, get to enjoy the first time. Not that it's enjoyable being the, 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 uh, uh, the child of a politician these days, but um, they're, they're excited to, uh, uh, to, to support me. And the, the timing felt right. Uh, we're coming out of, a, a, obviously, a, a historic uh, tragedy with the pandemic, and we've got a lot of uh, decisions to make. Uh, you know, getting into the pandemic was probably easier than it's going to be getting out of it. it. We had no choices at the beginning. Now we have a lot of different choices. There's a lot of emotions. The we're all in it together really has dissipated a little bit. And now real decisions have to be made in regards to uh, how we move forward out of this thing that we're really never out of. And, and what does it mean going forward that we have this virus living amongst us? How do we continue to live our lives? How do we continue to run our businesses? Uh, not to mention $40 million to spend uh, throughout right. the city. So we've got a lot of uh, big decisions to make. Uh, the Pittsfield before the pandemic probably won't be the same as the Pittsfield after the pandemic, just like many of our lives uh, with all the work from home that's happening, uh, the issues in schools and things of that nature. So there's a lot of serious discussion to be had and um, I'm, I'm running, I'm, I'm unopposed, which I think is, it's good and bad. I, having political discourse is good. So now, I being unopposed, uh, is your, can't, has this been, I guess, different for, for a lot of people running? So have you been out there door knocking or I, I know we talked earlier and you said you don't have yeah. any signs out, uh, cause signs are expensive. So <laughs> Um, Signs are expensive and intrusive. I didn't want to bother. If, if I didn't need to bother people with them, I didn't want to bother with them. I didn't. People. I had a lot of folks asking me when I was going to have a fundraiser, how could they donate? And I, I would prefer they use that money towards a charity, to their families, whatever. I don't need it. We don't need to buy. We want, I bought 20 lawn signs and a few t-shirts. So that's okay. all we need for poll day. Um, but yeah, so no, no door knocking for me. Uh, however, there's been a lot of conversation. I've had people in the ward already texting me, messaging me on Facebook, calling me about issues in their neighborhoods um, that uh, need addressing or have or in the process of being addressed uh, that need uh, further conversation. So getting a head start on that, had a chance to uh, meet with uh, Nick Kakamo. Uh, he was on his run. I was on my walk. So it was a great timing. We met on Elm Street and we talked about some of the initiatives uh, that, uh, that he had going in the ward, some of the neighborhood uh, concerns to, to keep an eye on. Uh, he gave me a good, a good list of, the, of those. And I've had people throughout the city contact me in regards to, frankly, uh, uh, the school safety is a big issue. That's something that came up from uh, a number of constituents um, and uh, school and schools in general, um, you know, the, and, and uh, development, uh, what's happening with the PETA site. I get questions on that it's kind of the neighboring board. So there's already been a, a good amount of uh, information coming to me, but I, I do, so I haven't knocked on doors. I, I have on my walks stopped into a couple, not all of them, but a couple of uh, small businesses to say hello, introduce myself, whatever they need type of thing. When I say my walks, I'm not 90, but I go, I take my walk from Kathy way to Dunkin' Donuts on first street uh, twice a week. Um, so keeping up with the neighbors. Uh, so it is different though than a, 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 a campaign with an opponent. Um, I, I do miss the debates. I have to be honest with people. Oh, you're, you're lucky. Nah, yes and no. There's that means there wasn't enough people to care to have an elect to, to, to uh, put their name on the ballot. And, and uh, it, the more conversation we have, the better off we all are. So I do miss the debates. I do miss having fundraisers and parties and rallies and things like that. But, you know, it's still a different world right now in regards to the, the right. COVID. So we'll take it easy on people. So 
you know, and my other answer than, to this um, is, other than the school stuff, <laughs> and you know, I, I'm a big proponent of school resource officers, and yes. and I know today I was reading in the, in the Eagle, uh, or no, uh, the Pensacola Police Department put a post on Facebook how they they had a bust, yes, and uh, got some guns off the street, and I noticed in that article that one of the school resource officers actually helped lead the police department. Well, they are a police officer, but they helped lead the investigation with information that they were able to get. So that was just another perspective of the value of a resource officer. But other than that, the school resource officers, what are the big issues is, you know, that one and what are, are there any other big issues that you're hearing that seem to be on the minds of, of people in your ward? Uh, the ward really is neighborhood by neighborhood. They, they have issues with whether it's flooding, whether it's blight, uh, whether it's um, uh, tree branches, and potholes, and all of that. Uh, paint, light, uh, uh, street painting uh, concern that I that I've heard already. So it really goes neighborhood by neighborhood in Ward Three. The but it's a ward councilor isn't just stuck in the ward though. It's, it's citywide. So the citywide issues that I'm hearing are in regards to public safety, in regards to uh, the school system, and, and it kind of ties in with the schools because it kind of starts there. We, we obviously had that big, um, the, the internet uh, or the, the video that was shown of, of the fight at the Connect that started really this conversation that shouldn't, the conversation should never stop. The, our minimum requirement for education is a safe environment for these, uh, for the students, for the staff, for the, for the uh, officers that are there. That's the minimum we can provide is a safe environment. If we're not doing that, we haven't done our job. So I do support having an SRO there properly trained, all of that, um, you know, doing the right things. We, we, I think we need to have that. Public safety in general, uh, in regards to drugs, in regards to violence, there's conversations I wanna have with the Pittsfield Police Department in regards to what, what are they seeing? And I wanna to talk to the frontline folks. What are they seeing? What do they need? What, um, what aren't they getting? Um, you know, what's, what are we missing as, as politicians? It's not just about throwing money at stuff. What, 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 what's the real issue here? And it's larger society idle issues, no doubt about that. So to me, that's what keeps me up at night, stuff like that. And then, um, you know, the uh, ARPA funds have come up. Where's my, where's my stance on that? And my stance on that is anything that we can use that money for to invest, to make the money go further. So for, I, my first uh, priority would be the small businesses that were hit by the coronavirus um, that, that lost funds due to it. I think mental health is a big issue that can be covered by those funds. And then infrastructure in the city, and that's what I was getting at with the first part of that, is investing it in the infrastructure. So you, know, you can't use the money to, to put down taxes, but we can use it for infrastructure that we need that otherwise would have to be paid by taxes, thereby stretching the dollar and not charging down the line for needed infrastructure for the city, whether it's water and sewer, whether it's removing blighted buildings, whatever the case may be. Right. So, well, like um, the mayor's at home program. Uh, I wasn't crazy about the first round of where the money was coming from, but I like the program. Yeah. And I saw that she's going to put half a million into that. I'd like to see more, to be honest yeah. with you, because there was that article I was reading and there, somebody who had a roof put on and the price was 25000 I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, if you look at the, the cost of plywood and materials, it's, yeah. uh, so I, I mean, with that funding, I, I think it's a a good program and i'd like to see more put in it i agree I, and I, I supported the program and not, not that i had a vote on it but when it was going forward i, I absolutely supported it um the neighborhoods um are a huge the, the housing stock in our neighborhoods is a huge issue never mind the fact that we need more market rate housing we need more affordable housing the housing that we currently have these single single family homes the neighborhoods need a facelift we have old buildings there's no doubt about it and having this carrot for individuals to uh, to apply for, to help them with the renovations, I, I think is huge. I think it's a motivator. And you know, if, if you start doing part of the street that gets people excited, you know, you gotta keep up with the Joneses. So one leads to another leads to another. Um, and, and housing in general and development is important to me. That's another thing that has come up is, you know, how do you, how do you feel about investment in the city with you know, Milltown going, uh, the investments they've made? Absolutely, whatever you need. I don't have a million dollars. I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have a hundred dollars. If you have, if you have millions of dollars to invest in the city in a proper way, zoning, all that kind of stuff, what do you need? How can we help you? How can we help that happen? The city was built that way. 
The, you right. know, the city, this city of Pittsfield wasn't born with water and sewer everywhere. It had to be built. It had to be developed. It had to be figured out. And there's ways to do it properly. But when folks are coming in with good plans that make sense, that are going to not only, yes, they're in for them. They're in for their businessmen. They're in to make money. But when they're doing the facelift, like, like they're at Basque, the, the, the community is fired up and excited. And that's a good thing. Visitors coming in and eating there and staying at hotels and, you know, doing good things in our community. That's exciting to me. And it uh, was big money housing. that originally built Pittsfield. You have right. uh, like McKay. Uh, he invented uh, a machine that figured out how to uh, mechanically put soles on shoes and it became the standard worldwide. And he had millions of dollars in his life that he dumped into Pittsfield. Yep. He uh, was a big proponent of our first reservoir. He built our first uh, fire station. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was the first chief, I think, at that time under the new station. Um, and you can go through the list. Clap, uh, yep. Clap Park is named for. He built the first um, city hall. Yep. Or, uh, so it's, there's a history of big money that actually did that. And if you went through... Uh, the whole city, you would see that with yeah. a few families. So what Milltown's doing, I'm okay with that uh, for sure, but we do need to focus on affordable housing yes. uh, and, and affordable rentals uh, if we do want to get new and younger people in here that can work in the service industry and work some of these jobs where they're good paying jobs, but you're not going to most likely work in a restaurant and make 130 grand a year, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, agreed on. 100%. We, we need affordable housing in good neighborhoods. And we need to, we, and, and when I say good neighborhoods, I don't mean just find a good neighborhood. I mean, make all our neighborhoods good. You right. know what I mean? Uh, help to develop the neighborhoods that we have, make them uh, a livable condition where folks want to be. We, we do want to attract new talent. We, we can't just keep hemorrhaging folks away, um, especially now that we have the opportunity to have people, even if they're not going to work in Pittsfield, to live in Pittsfield because of the ability to work from home now. I think we we should leverage that. We saw an influx of individuals during the during the uh, pandemic, and you know, let's make some lemonade out of this thing, and uh, yeah. you know, make it attractive for individuals uh, either to move here, but young people coming out of high school, coming out that maybe they can't go to college, but they have they they work in the area and give them the opportunity to uh, live in a good neighborhood affordably, and then you know, the housing stock itself is another story because that's just out of control from a market standpoint, and. That may be a blip. We'll see how it goes, but because uh, I don't know what a first-time home buyer has to do now to to get a first home, it's it's got to be up there. Um, so whatever we can do to uh, find ways to uh, increase affordable rentals and also, frankly, affordable single-family homes uh, that are that are uh, that are up to code and all that kind of stuff. So whatever renovations we can do, whatever investors want to come in and help with that, you know, op open arms, whatever it takes. Uh, uh, even our commercial buildings, if we don't start renovating these things every day it gets more and more cost prohibitive to do so and then we've got blight and then we've got a bad neighborhood and then we've got uh, destruction versus renovation so the, the the longer we put that off uh the the, the worse our neighborhoods become but because we are an old town there's no there's no it's not our fault it's just time time right. passes it is what it is and, and we can make some of these things beautiful we have we've seen that you know the saint mary's renovation we've seen uh, a lot of different uh, renovations uh, come come through come to fruition, but again, I don't have that kind of dough. And right. <laughs> those that those that do, there there is a lot of big big things on the table, and I, I love talking to you, Kevin. We've got a lot in common. I could keep this going forever, but uh, because there's a lot of issues, I do want to talk to to you about later on after you're on the council. I hope you continue to come back on. Uh, sure. Homelessness is another big one that I think you know, it's manageable now where we can really address that and make a difference in these people's lives and, and really have a solution to that before it has the possibility of getting out of control. Yeah. Um, so that's another big one, North Street. I'm sure you've heard about that. But um, I guess in closing, so I don't keep you here all night, uh, what would you say to your constituents uh, after you're elected, what they can expect, and if they have any questions or anything, how they can reach out to you? Sure. So first of all, thanks again for having me on, Mike. And yeah, anytime we want to chat, I'm happy to. There's times I'm sure we'll be disagreeing on items. Times we'll agree. Whatever the case may be, we'll at least have the conversation. And that's what the voters can expect from me. Voters of Ward 3, my number is 413-822-9511, kevin.j.sherman at gmail. And I've got Facebook uh, notifications. Feel free to track me down there. Uh, I will get back to you. I'll get back to you. It, now, sometimes it works. So give me a little bit of time. Sometimes it'll ball, I'm at a ball game. Give me a little bit of time. 
but I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll, I'll look into the issue. I'll deliver the news, good or bad, however we can get things done. Uh, what voters throughout the city of Pittsfield can expect is a, a reasonable approach to problems, um, a consensus building uh, problem solver. That's what I like to do is, uh, you know, see both sides of the issue. I'll take my stances. Um, we're not gonna agree on everything, uh, but we'll have the ability to, uh, to disagree with respect. Um, if something, on, if, if a meeting is going on and my opinion has been expressed by someone else, that's good enough for me. I don't need to speak. So, um, but if you don't want to talk to me afterwards, I'm always happy to talk. I'll be as transparent as I can be and make my decision, the best decisions that I can based on my beliefs. Um, and that's what you can expect. Hopefully the real deal. That's, that's what I want to bring to the table. Absolutely. I don't think anybody could expect more than that. So. Kevin, thank you again for taking the time to do this, and I'll, I'll be reaching out to you soon so we can continue some of these conversations. Like I said, I really enjoy speaking to you, so, uh, you know, there's a lot, to, it. Thanks, a lot Mike. to discuss. Th thanks for all the time you put in for all the candidates. It was really good service to the community, so thanks, Mike. Absolutely. You're very welcome, and, and uh, I will, I'll be in touch with you very soon. All right, cool. Thanks, man. All right, have a good night. Bye-bye.